right, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a long-awaited update on the North Star Cadillac engine project. Now, I've seen your comments. There's a lot of you out there that have been waiting for an update on this build, and there's kind of a reason that we have kind of taken a step back um, because there's a few things we need to address before we can move forward. And that brings me to the subject of today's video, the intake manifold. Now, this right here, this is a factory intake manifold for a North Star Cadillac engine. And you'll notice that it looks fairly similar to a lot of the LS intake manifolds that you see out there. Now, there are lots of guys who are running LS intake manifolds similar to this one, two crazy amounts of boost levels. But the problem with this one is I don't think it will stand up. And there's quite a few reasons why. So first off, let's talk about the throttle body connection. Now the throttle body connection at the front of the intake manifold is very much just a, like a rubber coupler style connection. And it goes to this flange here, which bolts to the front of the engine. And it actually sends coolant through the uh, throttle body flange in order to help heat up the intake charge and help the engine to warm up faster. The problem is this was never intended for boost. Both of these coupler connections here um, do not have any type of lip on them. And I don't think that this rubber piece here is designed to handle positive pressure. Now we could always upgrade it to a four ply silicone type uh, coupler, but I, uh, I really don't like that there is such a small sealing area here on the intake manifold. And the fact that there is no lip at all um, really concerns me. Now, I think there's fairly low likelihood that this would pop off because there really is nowhere for it to go, but I'm just not really a fan of this arrangement. And as we get into the other reasons why this intake manifold is not up to snuff, I think you'll agree this is just not the right intake for the job. The next problem with this intake manifold is the material selection. Now, GM was nice enough to leave markings on all of their intake manifolds, of what the intake manifold is actually made of. And if we look at the North Star intake, it says that it is made out of PA66. And what that means is it is made out of nylon 66. Now this is a decent material, um, pretty common for your typical intake manifold. But if we look at an LS intake manifold, we will find that this material is not quite as good as what we see on the LS. I went and grabbed a LS intake manifold and what we see for the material type is PA66GF33. Now this is also made of nylon 66, but it has 33% glass fiber reinforcement. That glass fiber reinforcement adds a significant amount of strength and also makes it stand up to higher temperatures. Now, as you can see, we have cut this LS intake manifold in half, which brings me to the next thing that we are going to talk about on the North Star intake, which involves cutting it in half. Now that we have the intake manifold cut in half, we can talk about how the air has to travel through this thing in order to get to the cylinders. Now GM designed this intake manifold to have a fairly long runner length and fit into a very compact location. Because of that, they made it so that the runners wrapped around the plenum and um, because of that, the air has to take quite a convoluted path in order to get to some of the cylinders. Now the air enters through the front here. It travels down this tube and then down into the bottom area of the intake manifold. And this is sort of the plenum of the intake manifold. Now in order to get to the front cylinders, the air has to make a 180 degree turn and then it is able to enter the uh, port mouths here in the front. Then it travels through there, up and around, 
and down into the intake port. Now, I am really not a fan of this arrangement, but it's no different than your typical LS truck intake manifold design, um, but I'm not really a fan of those either. Sure, you can increase the boost and basically boost past any type of restriction that this will uh, create, but that results in more boost pressure at the front here, and that also makes it so that your turbines have to work harder in order to make that boost, and it just makes the whole package worse. But that's not the only thing here that is of concern. If we look at the runner design, you'll notice that it has this large flat area here on top. This is going to create a lot of force in this direction when it is pressurized. And you'll also notice here at the bottom of the plenum that it is a very large flat area. And that is going to create a lot of surface area for the pounds per square inch to generate force. Now, as I've mentioned already, this is made of a worse material than the uh, LS intake manifolds, but comparing to a truck intake manifold, we also see that the wall thickness is less. So I really have a lot of concerns with making this intake manifold work. Um, one, it's not going to be a very efficient design. Two, it might blow up. And three, I don't know, it's not the most attractive thing. So how do we solve this? How do we come up with a better solution that will uh, accomplish our goals and, you know, maybe look good along the way? Well, it's been sitting here the whole time. Some of you might have noticed it already, but we decided to build our own intake. Now this may sound ridiculous, but nobody makes a lower intake manifold to go from the North Star LH2 to a Holly High Ram top. So we had to make our own. So the first step to designing this intake manifold was drawing it up in CAD. Now I decided to make it so that this intake manifold would adapt to a Holly High Ram style lid. As you can see here, this flange matches the Holly High Ram lids. Um, this opens up a whole realm of possibilities. We could run a sandwich plate style uh, air to water intercooler, as well as many of the other intake manifold tops that are available for this flange design. Now my next goal with this intake manifold was to make it so that the airflow path was not so convoluted. As I mentioned earlier, the uh, stock intake required the air to make a 180 degree turn. And as you can see with this intake manifold, the air would flow in uh, through the front of the Holly high ram lid and it should be able to flow nice and easily into all of the cylinders of the engine. Now as you can see here with this section view you can see that the intake runner length is quite a bit shorter. This was another thing that I was targeting. Now if you don't know about intake manifold design I've actually done a video on this before but uh, just to summarize, a shorter intake runner will typically favor higher RPM. Now, you definitely will sacrifice a little bit of low-end torque, but going to a shorter intake runner should favor higher-end horsepower production. And that is definitely one of my goals with this intake manifold, is to sort of sacrifice some of the punchy down-low feeling and get more of the high RPM scream. As you can see, these runner lengths are very short, so I bet this sucker's gonna scream. Now, you should always test print your pieces, um, especially when you're about to drop a big chunk of change on them, like what we did with this. So I printed this guy out, and we had a look at how it fit on the engine. Overall, it fit pretty good, but we did find that there needed to be a couple of notches here in the intake flange in order to get past the cylinder head. This is why you test print, and we were able to add those notches to the final piece, and it was all good. And here is the final piece. This was machined out of a solid chunk of aluminum, and <laughs> It came out super well. I am super proud of this. I designed the intake flange to accept the factory uh, O-ring style uh, intake gaskets. And if we drop it down on the engine, we see that it fits pretty dang good. 
So I hope that you guys see that we are trying to take these engines pretty seriously. Um, I really want to uh, come out swinging with this engine and um, that stuff takes time. You didn't think I would end the video without showing you what the lid looked like. With the lid on there, you can get an idea of what I am trying to do with this engine. I'm really trying to dress this thing up and make it look like a more premium offering. And as I mentioned before, this high ram lid really opens the possibility to uh, a lot of avenues. Um, for example, we can put a uh, sandwich intercooler in between here and run uh, a different uh, manifold top. You know, there's, there's dozens of options with that. Um, in fact, that is what we are going to do in the future. I actually have one uh, that will hopefully be on the way here soon. And um, I think that will uh, really clean up the package and just make this engine look like uh, a really cool offering and make a lot of people uh, pay more attention to it. And that kind of leads me into the next thing, which I hope you have already noticed. Um, I'm actually working on building a motor plate for this engine as well. Now, we mounted this engine up in the Fairmont Futura, and one of the things that I really dislike about this engine is the engine mount bosses on uh, the side of the engine. They are very far back on the engine. And that's, that's fine, I guess. Um, but on the driver's side, it becomes a pretty major issue because uh, as the steering comes down from the firewall, and tries to interface with the steering rack, that becomes very crowded. And um, also if you're trying to run your headers through that same area, um, basically it just, it makes the whole package uh, more difficult to uh, manage. And I felt like it would be far superior if we were able to get it, the motor mounts uh, further forward on the engine but there really isn't a great spot on the side of the engine for that. And being that this is kind of a short engine, um, the bore spacing on these is only 102 millimeters or right around four inches. So it's significantly shorter than like a small block Chevrolet. Um, you know, getting the mount all the way to the front of the engine, I think is great. Plus with a motor plate, you also get that race car look. Um, I'm a big fan of the motor plate look. I think it looks really cool and um, I definitely, uh, it, you know, it just takes it to that next level of, uh, you know, race car type look. Um, so I, I hope to turn a few heads with, uh, with this whole package right here. I know you guys are really excited about it. I, I think we get comments on it in just about every video. And by all means, continue to leave the comments. Updates are coming. Um, it just, it takes time. I really think that we are on to something with this engine platform, but we'll have to wait and see. So with that, I'm going to end this video off here. Uh, thanks for watching and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you in the next one.